Hi, good evening. My name is Corina Ramos. Uh, I am here for a couple of reasons. One, um, I was I was an illegal immigrant a long time ago. Uh, I arrived in this country when I was 13. I was hosted by uh, at the time the sanctuary movement. Um, this is a new version of it. This is this arose from the old sanctuary movement. Uh, we were hosted at the time in Delaware County by CASA. It was a coalition of two quick two, two synagogues, one Unitarian Church, one Presbyterian, and six Quaker meetings. It didn't start as such, but it grew into that uh, for many years. We were supported. It was my family, my brother and sister, and my parents. I crossed the border illegally uh, with my brother and sister. When I was 13, my brother was nine and my sister was five. My, my sister actually turned five at the detention center uh, with my grandmother, who was 64. So this is very dear to me, and it comes from my heart that I join in the New Sanctuary Movement and I am here speaking to you. There's about 1,100 being deported daily. Um, this is a huge number, insane number of people being deported. Uh, and the reason I'm here is to support, to stop the separation of families. I've been there, done that. Uh, it's not fair to the children, especially the ones that are here already, that are born here, uh, to separate the moms, to take away the moms. Uh, the breaking of dignity of the people, these are humans. We put braces on them. We keep them home, uh, waiting for their deportation. Uh, these are moms, pregnant moms with newborns. Uh, racial profiling. We're stopping these immigrants in the street driving to work just because we assume by their profile of Latinos being Hispanic that these are, you know, they don't have. They're out of status and that they need to be deported. Um, some of them are. Some of them aren't. Um, so the New Sanctuary Movement is a coalition that um, helps other immigrants, works with other women, and in the board we have many members who are <coughs> immigrants. Um, we train them, we train others to participate with us, we seek allies, we work with other, we have right now 10 interface groups that work with us, uh, hosting families and helping us with uh, the process of promoting uh, education of immigrants' rights and what immigration is all about, the reform, the present reform, and fighting for the bills that are in the, in, in the Senate right now. Um, let's see what else. Sorry. Um, we have built an amazing momentum. About 70% of the country now supports the pathway to citizenship. The reality of the political system right now is a football. Uh, the president's reform is probably unlikely to pass this season. We seek a comprehensive reform, one bill versus what is now several bills. The big problem needs, it needs to be addressed together, not in one single bill, not in separate parts. Um, we, right now it's a huge local win. We have, a, we have uh, attention and energy pressed on immigration reform, be, especially um, the New Sanctuary Movement created an event of uh, 40 days fasting where we called attention to the immigration problems, uh, local immigration problems in Philadelphia. This caused a huge movement, which made <coughs> different parts of the country have the same, do the same, have fasting. And it brought more attention, and this brought the bill to the Senate and, and to start working on it. The New Century Movement, uh, our philosophy is that we meet immigrants in the community support by allies. We put our share of faith, values, and action in organizing the policies that reflect the dignity and justice and hospitality for all people, regardless of immigrant status. There's a lot of ways that you can get involved. Uh, you can contact Nicole Flutterman. If you look in the New Sanctuary um, page, uh, you can contact her, and you can directly get information or, or see how you can participate and how you can do change in your community. Right now, we see people to call their local representatives. Uh, to support change in policies and support the, the immigration reform on the floor and also to help with the passing of laws that allow immigrants to have license and, and to have um, them pass the DREAM Act as well. So do you have any questions? Are you talking I, about um, Bill, this, the DREAM Act? That's, that's a federal law that you're talking about, mm -hmm. federal government. Mm -hmm. Um, well, just hearing your story, mm -hmm. and you know, those of us who are libertarians, mm -hmm. we see the problem you're having, and the problem is government. So, if this law is passed, and I don't blame you for looking to government to, to solve your problems. I mean, mm -hmm. it's government that's causing your problems, mm -hmm. but let's say, you know, they, 
everything's hunky dory, the best is still. Can we count on you in the liberty movement to produce government? Because if you can see what kind of promises, what kind of problems they cause for people. Right. Um, I believe so. That's what we're doing, and in a way, we're changing it. Um, we have recently. It, it was amazing to me. We partic my sons and I participated this summer with the movement, and we went and we harassed. In, in a way, um, politicians in City Hall. Um, they wouldn't open the doors to them. They closed the door to children. These were, we had about 40 to 60 kids come up to their office and they closed the hall. Um, they don't vote yet, so. Right, but still they, they are US citizens and they're children. I mean, how can you be afraid of children with pictures? Um, I, think, I think we can. I think we will continue and I think that those who are impacted, the children who are US citizens, who are impacted by this, can make a change as they grow. And if they see the support of the other folks, the allies, they would also increase that awareness. So, yes. um, why, why do people come here according to the government illegally and it's hard to obtain US citizenship? It is incre like it's incredibly hard process. It's not that easy. Um, the reason we come, and many of us have come, is because of the political influence from the US into other lands. So, during my time, it was because of the US you know, playing in, in, in their extended backyard um, and creating wars and civil wars and destroying our people, sending in um, military trade, special train to trade, uh, create a death squad that persecuted people who wanted justice in our country to stop that intervention. Um, that's why we come, uh, because other countries like the US like to take over and create things that we don't want. Um, so we leave. Other is the, the economy. Uh, the U.S. Man manipulates and monopolizes a lot of our trading, a lot of our markets. So we, you know, it forces people. It look, decreases the jobs. Uh, the, the jobs that are there are maquiladoras. Many of the times, these people are underpaid. So therefore, they they're forced to come here to seek better jobs. Because let's face it, Im illegal immigrants do the jobs others don't want to do. So, so it's just really hard to get. It is. Yeah. It is. Okay. It is. And then also the system to for legalizing yourself. If you are here in the US and you're illegal, you have to have come with a visa in order to obtain papers. You have to marry a US citizen. You have to um, not be out of status from the legal visa that you're given. Um, so it, it takes a long time. If you're out of status, it takes forever because then if you enter the process, you have to not just pay a fee, but you also have to pay by 11 years for each year you have been here illegally after a certain amount of time. So you go back to your country and then return, that takes forever. So, and right now the reform only says that 13, it take, would take 13 years to get to citizenship. So all of those things are really hard. Yes, go ahead. <clears throat> would you favor uh, opening the border and allowing completely free uh, movement of people, goods, and services uh, around the world? No. No, oh, no. why not? I, I, why I, don't, not? I don't think so. I think, that, I think that there should be I, I think my personal point of view is that there should be there should be a border and it should be respected, but I don't think that we should mil mil militarize it the way that right now the reform wants it to. We're talking about putting about over forty billions millions of dollars into it. We're talking about bringing in drones, putting military folks to do that. Um, I know I ha my sister is a member of the Navy, and she says that that would be the hardest thing for her to serve that she doesn't want to go into the border and serve and, and see and, and, and restrain fellow immigrants because she was one. She crossed the border when she was five. And she remembers that. Um, even though she's a US citizen, she's a Navy member. So I don't think so. I don't think that putting another fellow human against another human to restrain them is OK. Well, if I could follow up then, because uh, I asked you if you favor opening the border to un, you know, unrestricted immigration and goods and services crossing it. Uh, how do you, if you're advocating some kind of control, how do you prevent the government from abusing that power? Okay. I couldn't go that far. Good answer. Good answer to the question. Keep up now. Okay. That's it. Uh, uh, go ahead, sir. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, it seems to work okay with us uh, not having any checkpoints between us and New Jersey. Uh, and, uh, despite the, the weird criminals that, that exist over there. And, uh, you know, but yet, uh, somehow, we, somehow we manage to do just fine. Um, and both of those groups of politicians can still maintain their, their, their individual tax farms. But yet we don't need to have a checkpoint. Uh, is there some, much of Europe exists that way, much, much of, most of the world exists that way, 
our own country existed that way for most of its history. Uh, why? What happened that, that that you feel justifies the need to have any border at all, any kind of checkpoint, any kind of restriction on on, on the on the on the freedom to travel? And I know not this is going to make sense to you, but. Um, I think it's sort of like the language. Um, I'm a believer that anyone that comes into the United States should speak, should speak English. I think that if we're here in order to compete with the work market, the employment market, you should speak the language if you want a good job and if you want to participate within the economy. Um, so the same thing with the border. I think that, in, in, in a way, to me, it's part of the nationality, part of the um, nativeness of each nation. I don't think that should be disrespected, just like the language. So when you come to Pennsylvania, you should speak Pennsylvania Dutch I so you don't get to come in. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that much, but yeah, I think it's like going to the south, you kind of adjust to the southern ways. If okay. you come east, you know, you kind of adjust to the east ways. I mean, my Spanish isn't so good, so does that mean I shouldn't be able to live in California? Or? No, I think you should be. You should be aware that, you know, it affects your... Oh, okay. Yeah, it's That's okay. okay. That's okay. I like the humor, everybody. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, you said that 70% of Americans now support citizenship. Were you talking about legal citizenship? Yes. In that? Okay. Yes. I just want to clarify that. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Oh, two things. I, yeah, I don't think anymore if you marry someone that you can become a U.S. citizen. It, it, yes, you can. It depends. Um, it's a really complex. You have to have, if you came in with a visa, okay. you immediately get the, you start the process within six months. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't come with a visa, you have to wait. You have to, um, you should wait until some kind of law passes because first you should break it down to just do the, the petition, the I-130, mm -hmm. and then you should go into the green card, which is the whole packet. But you have to wait for that law change, otherwise you go into deportation proceedings for having to enter illegally. Okay. Uh, the other question I had is, and I'm taking another position. Go ahead. Not necessarily my own. That's People okay. who live on some of the border states like Arizona, New Mexico, whatever, mm -hmm. have complained that because of the illegal immigrants, it's, it's costing more money for people who end up like in emergency wards and police and other things? I don't think so because um, illegal immigrants can't have the benefits. If you're not legal, you can't have the benefits of any... Well, in other words, you're saying if they go, come to an emergency ward, they're not going to want to see them. There is a law where you are allowed to be served at the emergency room, with whatever status you are in. Right. So that the hospital knows that, so that's why they serve you even undocumented in, in the Right, but I'm saying, so some of these <clears throat> places are saying, this is money that <clears throat> their taxes are going for. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a problem it's, with the welfare state? It, no, the it's not. It, you can't claim welfare because you're out of status. You have to prove that you're a U.S. citizen. No, I'm saying the welfare. He, he suggests, I mean, the, the argument, I'm not saying he holds it, but the mm -hmm. argument is that uh, people are angry at illegal immigrants because they come in and take advantage of public services. Yep. Well, to me, that sounds like a problem with the welfare state. If you're not offering any services, right. if you're privatizing everything, they have to pay for their own way. And they either would come and pay or they would just Immigrants pay. still pay taxes. They, many of them have tax IDs. Um, they can't use it as social security numbers, but they still report taxes. And with this, with this reform, even if you have paid the taxes, they won't validate that tax ID number. They're talking about making them repay everything from the moment they, they, they arrive. So these people already have a debt. And let's not mention the pack, how much the package is gonna cost and how much the, the fee uh, for doing this is gonna cost because they're gonna have a fine for this in order to do this. They've had a fine before of 1,500. Uh, now it's gonna be even higher. They're talking about 3,000 per person. Uh, can you imagine? So. It's not that easy. It's not that simple, and they don't take everything as freely as many people say. Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, you know, during the time, and this is exactly the same thing, but it's correlates. But during the time of slavery, uh, a lot of northern states would nullify federal laws that said if a, a slave escaped to the to your state, you had to give them back to the owner in the South who was, you know, missing his property. Uh, Massachusetts, for instance, said, you know, you. We're not we're ignoring that law. You know, would you? And I, I see you. You know, we have care signs. And you just uh, mm -hmm. went to Philadelphia City Hall. Mm -hmm. Are your efforts concentrating more on a federal level, or would you consider concentrating more on like Pennsylvania and the individual states to say, you know, to vote on uh, like a, a resolution that says the federal government ain't gonna 
send their pe their goons in here and take our people away from to take um, the people living in our, our state movement away from is focused us. only on Philadelphia, okay. Pennsylvania. Okay. So that's where we're focused right okay. now. We really focus on ending the deportation here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're really <coughs> looking forward to you know ending the the relationship between ICE, mm -hmm. uh, who takes folks away, uh, and and this, and police. Uh, th that should be happening. Right. Um, police shouldn't be immediately releasing the records or calling immigration for these people to be reported. Mm -hmm. deported. Um, there should be a process that they should go through. Um, so yeah, that's where we're working. Okay. Hopefully with that push. Yeah. And there's a sign-up sheet if you could, if you'd like to receive more information from the New Secretary Movement or be part of the mailing list. Go ahead. You said the reason that you came here was because the United States is in Mexico? No, in El Salvador. I'm from El Salvador. Oh, El Salvador. Yeah, I, okay. I was. So the United States is down there what? with troops and yeah. they're killing all the jobs or something? Yeah. That during the, there was a civil war in El Salvador for 14 years. During that time, there was uh, intervention of the United States. And they helped create the war in El Salvador. They provided arms. They provided um, training, special training to create death squads, uh, to, to participate, to push the, our government to kill its own people. Uh, from that, people arose. And that's why there was a civil war for many years. My father was a union leader during that time, and he was death threatened, and he had to flee. So when he fled, he left us behind with my grandma, his mother, for a year and a half. Um, it took him six months to get to the border because he his his <coughs> travels took him longer, and he also got lost in the desert with my mother. And then they were put in a, in a detention center. From the detention center, uh, Parish took them out and put them in a in a refugee camp in, in Harlingen, Texas. And that's where my dad met many Americans that were <coughs> connected to come here and be hosted. Why wouldn't you go to some other country and, except for the big bad America who was down there doing all this? Things? They tried. Okay. They applied to Canada, and it, they didn't accept them. There's a lot of so two years are to to take it. And it's, it's not going on and now. You could all be reunited back then, man. We were reunited here. Uh, we were granted political asylum. My dad proved what was going on in El Salvador in I federal court. Keep in here. Take care of your own house first. That's a lot. That's, well, the U.S. should have done that during that time and should have stayed out of our house. <laughs> then take them out. And you we them were out. very small. That's so what we tried. Is. No, ma'am, we tried as a civil movement. That's right. why my dad was death threatened. That's why many of his friends were killed. That's why many of my friends were killed. That's why when I got out of the house, when I was eight and 10, I would step over dead bodies, brains spilled over. Yes. When I would travel to school, I was shot by army because they were being trained. And the military had all the arms from the U.S. And this is the 150th anniversary of the uh, Civil War in Gettysburg. And so we had Civil War here in our country too. Dead bodies and brains and everything. I've been demand man, that's history for you. Go ahead. I just want to say, I, I, you know, I think we're so lucky that you're family had the courage to, to do what they did to get you here and to, to endure all of that. And I just think that's a, that's a, just an amazing story. And I'm grateful that there's people like that in the world willing to go to that trouble to come here and be part of our community. So. Um, did you notice any United Nations troops down there? Uh, intervene or anything like that? It only during, um, they're only allowed to be there during voting seasons. They mostly participate your vote because they're not allowed to take sides. Okay. So they don't go in to take sides. Just, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh,